Hello, lads, lassies, and those of unspecified gender. It's the Irishman here, and today we're going to be talking about what would have happened if future Gohan had God Key. This is the second part to this what if, and if you have not already seen the other part, the first one, then I would greatly recommend you go check that video out. It will be linked in the description below, a playlist with both that video and this one for your viewing ease and pleasure. But now, with that out of the way, let's get into the story of this what if. Like I said in the last part, sadly they cannot bring back their friends just yet. Because even though Piccolo is still alive and they have the Earth's Dragon Balls, most of the Z Fighters have already been revived by the Earth's Dragon Balls, at least once. Well, at least once by the Earth's Dragon Balls. Some of them were brought back by Namek's, but Namek doesn't have the same restriction that Earth's Dragon Balls do. So, if they want to bring their friends back, it's just a simple road trip to a far-off planet. The only problem is, they don't know where New Namek is. But Piccolo or Kami, I can't remember if I fused them in the last part, could definitely get in contact with King Kai to be able to find out where New Namek is. Then it's just as easy as making a ship and going there. And thinking about it, I wouldn't say that we still had the Dragon Balls if I fused Piccolo and Kami in the last part. So Kami can definitely get in contact with King Kai and find out the coordinates of New Namek. Then, being able to fly there with the help of Bulma and Dr. Briefs, who could definitely make a spaceship to get them there. It would be pretty easy seeing as they already rebuilt a ship that was able to get them to the old Namek. And even though it might take about a month at most, that is still no time in comparison to the original future timeline, wherein they had no hope of getting back their friends. Right now, it's just a month, again at max. After arriving on Namek, they would be confronted by Elder Mori, the current guardian of New Namek. Seeing as Guru still died in this timeline, Gohan having God Key, especially awakening to it in his future counterpart, wouldn't change anything with Guru. So he's still dead, but Mori is more than able to help them in getting the Namekian Dragon Balls and wishing back all of their friends. The only difference is it just takes one wish here. Since Mori, as we learned in the Boo Saga, had upgraded the Dragon Balls on Namek to be able to bring back multiple people, realizing that the Z Fighters would most likely need their aid again. Then, with a single wish, all of their friends are brought back, but they do still have two wishes. So, Gohan, ever eager to reconnect with his father, would try and wish back his dear old dad. However, it doesn't work, since Goku died of natural causes, and even Paranga can't bring somebody back in that circumstance. So, instead, Gohan just chooses to use his second wish to understand the power that he has, the dormant energy that he never really got a good understanding of. And with Purunga's help, especially having access to the Namekian Book of Legends, they would find out about the Super Saiyan God, as well as God Key. Now, Purunga doesn't have a ton of information on God Key itself, but with the Super Saiyan God, he does know about the ritual and Yamoshi, which doesn't really help Gohan that much since he never partook in a ritual. Seeing as they didn't even know that there were five kind-hearted Saiyans or Saiyans in general when Gohan was born and, well, conceived. So there would be no way for him to have gotten the ritual done on him, and it means he has some mysterious circumstance for getting God Key. We'll chalk this up to some sort of a genetic mutation, which is also probably the conclusion that Gohan would come to in this story. This is at least better than in the original, where Gohan had no real way to go off of on where his power came from. He was just different than all of the other Saiyans, most likely because he was a hybrid, but even then, Goten and Trunks didn't show the same potential, even though they were able to get Super Saiyan early, but I'm going off track here. Either way, they don't really have a need for a third wish. At most, I can see them wishing to rebuild the Earth to where it was, 
before the androids attacked. That way, the humans don't have to do all that on their own. And with all of that done, they would then head home. But Kami would talk to Piccolo telepathically, telling him to get another Namekian to come home with them, one from the Dragon Clan. That way, they can make new Dragon Balls there on Earth. Piccolo would wonder why, thinking there might be some sort of a problem with Kami's, but it doesn't really matter. Either way, he would get Dinde to come along with them, and then they would all head home to Earth. Kami would tell him that after seeing Piccolo defend the Earth on multiple occasions, and realizing that he probably is too old to continue being Guardian any longer, Kami wishes to fuse into Piccolo. Not only so that Piccolo and him can be whole once more, but also because he realizes there's not much he can do to defend the Earth past just providing Dragon Balls, which Dinde can do better than him at this point. So Kami wants to defend the Earth in his own way, providing power for Piccolo, allowing for him to be strong enough to properly defend the Earth with Gohan, of course, but Piccolo would now be a bit stronger and could actually contend with the likes of Super Saiyan God Gohan. Well, at least, he hopes. Of course, Piccolo wouldn't be as strong as the godly version of the Half Saiyan here, but he is still a lot closer than he would have been without Kami's help. After the two fuse, Piccolo is… different. He isn't the same Namekian he was before fusing, not only because he's stronger, but also because his mental state is changed. This provides Piccolo with a newfound desire to protect the Earth and give his life to do so if needed, rather than just choosing to do so because he wanted to. Now it's an obligation. And even before Piccolo didn't want to protect the Earth, it was more so everybody around him was doing that and he didn't want Gohan to get hurt. Now he actually wants to defend the Earth because it's his home, as well as all of the people on it. He recognizes the importance of life, as well as wanting to defend the planet with everything he can. But really it doesn't change too much in the grand scheme of things. Gohan was already going to give up his life if need be to protect the Earth, and in Super Saiyan God, even with the boost from Kami, Piccolo is nowhere near Gohan's max strength. However, after a couple years training with Gohan, and Gohan actually would keep up his training here, realizing what might happen if he doesn't, Piccolo would decide to find alternative routes to power, because the gap between him and his student just keeps getting wider and wider by the day. Even though Piccolo is still definitely getting stronger from this training, he feels stagnant, like he's staying in the same place, whereas he is still getting stronger. Gohan keeps getting far, far more powerful by the day. Even if Piccolo is doing the same, it's a completely different extent with Gohan. And one day, while reminiscing about their time on Namek, Gohan's being a lot more lengthy and a lot more fruitful, eventually Piccolo would remember something from his Namek side, especially with Gohan telling him about it himself, the fact that Guru was able to unlock people's potentials. And with that in mind, Piccolo would wonder if he could get that same sort of boost, so he would go up and ask Dende if he could unlock his potential. However, he can't. Dinde just doesn't have that ability, even if Elder Mori might be able to. But Piccolo doesn't have time to go to New Namek again, it just would be a waste of time and resources. So instead, he decides to get the Dragon Balls, summoning Shenron and asking him to unlock his potential, just like how Elder Guru did for Krillin and Gohan. And this would be extremely effective, giving him his very own transformation, kind of like the ultimate form for Gohan in the original. But even with this incredible new transformation, Piccolo is still behind Gohan's max. Having Super Saiyan God as well as incredible hybrid potential, Gohan is an absolute beast, no pun intended. So even though Piccolo is getting stronger and definitely a lot closer to closing that gap than ever before, Gohan does still have a lead, except now, Piccolo feels like he might be able to catch up for the first time in forever. Although it's safe to say that any threat that appears on Earth would be taken down with relative ease. I mean, Boo would be no threat to Gohan alone, let alone Piccolo stepping in to lend aid. 
The Boro would be wiped off the face of the earth, and the other minions of Babidi would be no threat, not that they were in the original. And Boo himself, if he were to be awakened, would still be taken out with relative ease. Piccolo would begin training under the Supreme Kai, since Gohan's too busy, and Piccolo does still want to close that gap. So, after training with his Z-Sword for a bit, he would get a bit stronger, but Really, he's far past the level that the Z-Sword could bring him to. So, after breaking it while testing it on some Kachi Kachin, he would release the Elder Kai, who would awaken his potential yet again, far more than Guru ever could, and thus Shenron as well. And this gives him the actual ultimate form, which would probably be a lot stronger than the other one he was using. I assume they're pretty similar, but we'll say that this is kind of a boost on top of that boost. Sadly, this would prevent Piccolo from ever getting the orange form, only in visual effects, because the ultimate form would simply absorb the orange form into the ultimate form, meaning that although he still gets the power, he doesn't get any of the visual changes, which is probably a good thing. I assume that the orange form would give some sort of lumbering effect to his movements, not necessarily making him slower, just a bit more bulky, which isn't really good in a fight. Now, one thing to note is that Beerus never woke up in the future timeline, meaning that we have no version of Super to base this story off of, because, well, Beerus doesn't wake up, so Super never happens. Battle of Gods doesn't, and then Resurrection F doesn't happen as a result of that. Gohan and Piccolo would be much more keen on defending the planet here. So, when some weird alien powers arrive on the Earth and gather the Dragon Balls summoning Shinron, they would arrive on the scene right away killing all of Frieza's men and redisposing of Frieza. It's actually probably a good thing that they were able to kill off Frieza after he was revived by Shinron. That way, it's impossible for him to be brought back by Shinron again. But with a second wish at their disposal, and knowing that if the Frieza Force was able to track down Earth, then they might be able to find new Namek. So they would use Shinron's powers to make sure that Paranga can't revive Frieza either. Seeing as Dende is stronger than Mori, he would be able to do this. When Champa goes collecting the Super Dragon Balls, he not only wouldn't want to make a wish that affects the Earth, but also wouldn't be able to find the Seventh because it was the hidden planet, well, it was hidden as the nameless planet, that Champa A didn't care about or B didn't even know it existed. So he can't really get all seven Dragon Balls since the last one is disguised in a way that he will never find. As for the Goku Black arc, well, for obvious reasons, it just wouldn't happen. This is still the future timeline, and Zamasu would never begin to hate mortals as much as he did in the original, because he wouldn't be pissed off that they were using God Key. Granted, he would still be a little racist against mortals, but it just doesn't really matter since it would never fester into anything too dangerous before Gowasu stomps it out. The Tournament of Power would never happen because it relies on the Goku Black Arc, and Zeno didn't destroy the universes in the future timeline until the Goku Black Arc happened, which in the future timeline was far after when the Tournament of Power would have been taking place. Moro wouldn't have escaped the Galactic Patrol Prison, meaning the Galactic Patrol Prisoner Arc wouldn't happen either. Although, assuming it does, then Moro would be no match for Gohan, who would have reached Super Saiyan Blue with a much higher base power level than either Goku or Vegeta by that point, and Orange Piccolo, well, Ultimate Piccolo, who had orange underneath it, would be more than enough to take care of Moro probably individually but working together, they're a dynamic duo that could easily defeat the wizard. Especially realizing quick that their power was being absorbed, they would be able to finish it quickly and make sure that Moro was no threat to the universe any longer. 
The Broly movie, as well as granola arcs, wouldn't happen because they rely on Frieza, which inherently relies on the Tournament of Power because that's when Frieza was revived. So without him being revived, neither arc happens, and we skip right to Superhero, although it's not the same sort of arc that it was in the original, because here Dr. Hedo would have no- Dr. Hedo would have no involvement in the creation of the android threat that would arise. Cell would arrive in the future timeline with incredible power. Perfect Cell. Not Imperfect Cell, not Semi-Perfect Cell, not Cell Max, or any of the Gammas. It would be Perfect Cell, who would have God Key infused within him, as well as the data of Orange Piccolo, of Super Saiyan Blue Gohan. He would be incredibly powerful, stronger than anything the main Dragon Ball timeline has seen before, with the obvious exception of the gods. Although, with the powers of Gohan and Piccolo, who each would have been training for countless years with God Key at their disposal, well, at least Gohan has God Key at his disposal, I wouldn't be surprised if this version of Cell was even stronger than Beerus. And seeing as Gohan is the only one who could sense this version of Cell's power, he would immediately go out to fight against the genetic monster. He feels the powers of Goku, Tien, Yamcha, Krillin, all of his friends, even himself and Piccolo, but more so than anybody is the first person I mentioned. He feels Goku. He's terrified, but at the same time, he wants to believe his father has come back. He's blinded by that belief, so he goes out in search of that power, and is face to face with Perfect Cell. Not wasting any time, Cell would lunge at Gohan. The two would begin to brawl, but Gohan is at a major disadvantage here. Even in Super Saiyan Blue, his power is subpar at best compared to the likes of Cell, although he's also at a mental disadvantage. Because, well, he feels his dad's key, and he hasn't even seen Goku in decades. So now, having to go face to face against someone with a similar key signature, it's it's just too hard for him. Mentally, he's at a loss, and power-wise, for the first time in decades yet again, he's at a disadvantage. He's never actually been put this far on the ropes ever since he was a little kid. And with Piccolo being able to feel Gohan's power surging, having gotten used to Gohan's godly key mixed with his mortal key, he would be able to join the fight. Seeing Gohan going against an absolute monstrosity of powers combined, as well as having the same sort of godly energy emanating off of him. But even though the two of them working together would be enough to push Cell, it still isn't enough because Gohan has these mental limiters. He feels like he's fighting against his father, training with him yet again. He gets a flood of memories, remembering when he was just a little kid and his dad hadn't died of the heart virus. It's horrible to think about, but Gohan just wouldn't be able to cope with the idea of fighting against his dad. He hasn't seen him in decades. So Piccolo would begin to try and psych him out of it, but nothing he says works. He is isn't able to convince Gohan to get past this, so he begins to lower his power ever so slightly, that way Cell can land a near fatal blow. Gohan would believe that Piccolo was really just killed, and he doesn't even notice that Piccolo had to slightly lower his power. If anything, that could just simply be a loss of stamina, resulting in a slight loss in strength. Either way, Cell is still far beyond them, so it makes sense he could kill Piccolo. And seeing this happen right in front of him, he begins to lose his mind. His sanity begins to shatter as his godly power mixes with his mortal key perfectly. His rage finally explodes out, and his limiters are gone. All of his distant trauma, all of his power, all of his hope and dreams and desires to beat Cell combine into one giant aura. As his hair begins to spike up past anything Super Saiyan could accomplish, and it flushes white, as suddenly Gohan achieves his beast state. 
Remembering Goku, remembering Piccolo, remembering both of his father figures and the people that allowed him to get to these heights, he would use one single attack to finish Cell off, a special beam Kamehameha. And with this one blast, as well as a couple hits and kicks just to lower Cell down, he would completely eviscerate the monster. Atom by atom, Cell couldn't regenerate. He was finally gone, and Piccolo would show that he didn't actually die. He just need go on to think that, that way he could get past what was limiting him mentally. But now, with Gohan's anger finally mastered, with his god key perfected to its fullest extent, and with the beast form in conjunction with his god key making him stronger than any threat that could ever arise, this is where we'll be ending the story for today. I could definitely go with a GT aspect, but seeing as we've kind of covered super fully, I don't think there's any real reason to. So with all of that done, I hope you have an excellent day. This story was fun to cover, it is relatively short, but that tends to happen with the future timeline. So I hope you enjoyed watching, and bye.